Yo guys, what the hell is going on? This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 27 and in this video we're going to talk all about font size. That's coming up. Okay, so so far in this course we've looked at mainly selectors, that is how to target elements on a HTML document. And we've got our ID selectors, we've got our class selectors, we've got our element selectors, among other things like descendant and child selectors, pseudo classes, etc. But now we're going to shift that focus over to the declaration. So when I've been putting properties in the rules in the past, I've been saying to you, you know, take no notice of this, we're going to cover it later. That's what we're going to do now and we're going to start with the font size property. So when we do font size, we can do it in two ways. We can give something an absolute font size or we can give something a relative font size. And the difference I'm going to explain as we go back into the code. But generally speaking, absolute uh, measurements are in pixels and relative measurements are in M's or percentages. So we're going to take a look at all three of these now when we jump back into the code. <laughs> Okay, ninjas, here I am back in the code. We've got an article HTML page here and a blank CSS file here. So the article page is a H1, a few H2s, and some P tags within the article. And we're going to target all of these different elements. So we'll do our selectors first. They are H1, H2, and P. So we're going to give these a font size property. And we'll do the H1 first. Now, the way we do the font size property is by simply writing font hyphen size. Okay, that's the property name. This is where we control the font size of that element. And then we do our colon, and then we put in a value. Now, we're going to start with pixels, which is an absolute value. And when I say absolute, I mean we give it a definitive value, a number that's intrinsic. Okay, and it doesn't change. So we'll say 48 pixels, and that's quite a large font size, and by the way, this PX here stands for pixels. Um, that's quite a large font size because it is a H1 after all, so we'll make it quite large, make it stand out. And the H2 will give a font size of 32 pixels. And then the P will give a font size of 16 pixels, which is kind of like standard font size for general paragraph text on a web page. So we'll save that and we'll see what it looks like now within a browser. Okay, so there's our H1 at the top, H2 is here, and our paragraph tags. So just to check that this has worked, what I'm going to do is right-click each element, and I'm going to go to Inspect Element, which is going to open up Google Tools here. And you can see my rule in syntax.css for the H1s here, font size 48 pixels. And if I hover over the H2, then you can see the rule font size 32 pixels, which we did, and over the P's, font size 16 pixels. Now then, I'm going to show you something pretty cool. If you look here on the H1, you can see another rule underneath mine, and it's in grey, and it says here, user agent style sheet. Now, that's the default style, the default browser styles being applied that we talked about in an earlier lesson. And we can see there that it was two M's. It's crossed out because I've overridden it, but if I uncheck this, you can see now it's two M's and it changed size up here. Now, M's are a relative unit of measurement, and we're going to cover those now. So I'm going to jump back into the code just to show you what this means. I'm going to delete these here for now. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to use inheritance. Now, we covered inheritance in a previous lesson. If you've not watched that video, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below so you can go and check that out. But for the rest of us, I'm going to use inheritance to demonstrate why we'd use M's and percentages. So we know that I can select the article tag by doing that. Just write a simple article selector. That's going to grab the article tags. And then I'm going to give those a font size of 16 pixels. OK, so then what I'm saying is everything within the article, give a font size of 16 pixels. So the P's and the H2's. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the H2. So we know that H2 here is inheriting this font size of 16 pixels, but we can override it. It's already been overridden in the default browser styles, but we're going to override it again ourselves. And we're going to say font size is going to be three M's. Now, this here, M's, that's a relative measurement. And what we're saying with this is that we're saying take the base font size, which it's inheriting, which is 16 pixels, and then times that by three. That's what M's do. Okay, so we're going to get this 16 pixels and times it by three, which is 30, 48 pixels. Okay, so I'll tell you what, we'll do it by four just to make it bigger. And that's going to make it 64 pixels, this, uh, uh, this H2. 
Okay, so we'll save that and we'll right click and show in Explorer and view it in Chrome. And now these here are 64 pixels. Okay, and that's because they are M's, four M's. They're inheriting 16 pixels font size and then we're times it by four because this is a relative unit and we're saying we want the H2 font size to be four times as large as the inherited style. Make sense, yeah? The same is true for percentages. So we'll do the same with the P tags. Article P, and we're gonna give these a percentage font size. And we'll say, um, what should we say, 60%, no 50%, that's nice and easy. So we're saying again, the P's are automatically inheriting this 16 pixel font size because we've said everything in the article gives 16 pixels. But then with that inherited style, we're overriding the font size and we're saying, okay, take 50% of that size that we're inherited and display that to user, to the user. So we're taking 16 pixels, times it by 50%, which is eight pixels, and then it should output as that in the browser, which is gonna be pretty small to be honest. Um, get your glasses on everyone. Yep, I can't read a thing there, but take my word for it, it's about eight pixels. Okay, so let's just try one more, we'll say 500%. So 500% is essentially saying take 16 pixels and times that by five, isn't it? So that would be 50, 80 pixels roughly that this is. Um, we'll view it in the browser one last time. Yeah, freaking huge text there. <laughs> okay, so that about covers it. We've got our pixels, which are absolute, uh, absolute um, sizes. They don't change depending on what they inherit. You just give it a size and that's that. And then we've got our relative measurements, which are M's. And if it's 4M, you take the inherited style or the base style and you times it by four. If it's 4.5, you times it by 4.5, etc. And then you've got your percentages, which are similar to M's, but this time they work in a percentage format. So same again, we're saying times it by 500%, the inherited style, and display that font size. Okay, so hopefully that clears up how we control the font size in CSS. If you have any additional questions, feel free to throw a comment or two down below and I'll answer all of those as soon as possible. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, like or share them and I'll see you guys in the next one.